This video is sponsored by Unity. Currently on the Unity Asset Store, there is a mega bundle sale where you can save up to 90% on some great hand-picked assets. If you're at all interested, please check it out using the link in the description below or in the comments. And if you actually decide to make any purchases, that'll help in supporting the channel too. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Getting Started of Unity tutorial. In the previous two videos, we've been using Dotween to do the animation for the end turn button. And I thought I'd keep the end turn button thing for this video. And instead, we're actually going to animate it using the Unity animator itself. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So this video will be split up into three parts. Part one will be setting up Unity. So we'll make sure the input's all correct. We'll be setting up the actual animator itself, doing the keyframes, creating the animation. So for step two, we'll be doing the coding. There honestly isn't that much to do. We're actually going to duplicate the script we wrote last time when we're using Dotween, and we'll just be changing it around to use the animator. It's honestly not that much. And then finally, for step three, we'll be testing it inside of Unity. Let's get started. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've made in my tutorials folder a new folder called animators. So this is to do with the animator, obviously. And I've made a new scene. I've actually duplicated the scene we used for the Dotween, okay? So we still have the button and the event system, the light and the camera. The only difference is on the button, I've removed anything to do with the actual turning button. So the button turn script, the turn button script, I've taken that off. So we just have this, okay? And then one other thing I did is I moved the input asset to the root of the project, okay? So in the root, we now have controls over here. I've not actually changed anything on here. We still just have spacebar triggers change turn. We're actually gonna be using that again in this video, but I've put it in the root because we'll be using it in different tutorials rather than just the Dotween one. And I don't want to have to make multiple different input action assets. So now let's make the animation. So to do the animation, it's quite simple. We just need to go to where we want to make it. So I'm gonna to go to animators and I'll just do it in here. So I'm gonna create a new animator controller, okay? Now each thing in your game has its own animator controller. It is like the state machine for that particular thing. So we have this button and it has a controller. Then if we add another of the same button, it would still have that same controller. Same in our game when we have our player, the player would have a controller and then each different type of enemy would have a controller. It's that kind of thing. So we're gonna call this controller underscore turn button, okay? Now this controller will go onto the button, but we'll just keep it in here for now. What we need to do now is create some actual animations. So we're gonna have two animations. So I'll call it anim underscore uh, turn button, okay? And then underscore, this one will be uh, change to end turn, okay? Because we're gonna have one that changes to be end turn and one that changes to be combat. So let's duplicate this, control D. And I'll call this change to um, combat, okay? So we've got two animations. We actually need to animate them in a second, but two animations and a controller. If we double click on this controller, it opens up the state machine, which currently has nothing in here. What we want to do is basically build up the logic for going between our states. And it's quite simple for this button. So I'll create an empty state to start off at, which means that when we start, we don't actually do any animation. It's just static. So we'll call this empty or default idle, whatever, it's up to you. Okay, this has no animations. And then what we actually need to do is we need to make, uh, well, sorry, drag in these two, okay? So we've got the change to end turn and change to combat. Now, the first thing that happens when we press the button is it changes from end turn to combat. So we're gonna start in uh, change to combat because when we press the button, we're gonna go from empty, right click, make transaction, a uh, transition, sorry. So the first time we actually press the button, we go from empty to here, okay? Change to combat, so then it flips. And then once we're in this state, we stay here until we press the button again. And when we press it again, we go to here. So right click, make transition to here. And then when we're here and we press the button, we actually just go back. So this is how it is now. We start here in empty, okay? We go to here and then once we're in here, we actually just go back and forth, okay? We don't ever go back to empty. That's just to start it off without doing animation. And this works perfectly fine. But then how does it actually know to go between the different states? Well, we need to give it conditions, transition conditions. So. If we click here, we've got these conditions. It's a list that's empty. We need to actually be able to give it a condition. So I'm gonna to go to the parameters tab and press plus trigger. A trigger is kind of like a Boolean. It's either on or off, but once it's been used, it turns off. So it's kind of got built-in ways to help us. I'm gonna call this um, like change. Oh, I'll call it flip button. Okay, so this is the flip button parameter. So when this is triggered, okay, when it's triggered, we want to do stuff and when it's not, then we don't. So we say we want to go from empty to this when we, let's press add, flip button. It's the only option, so it's just there, okay? And then it's actually the same for all of them. We want to flip button, I want to go back when we press flip button. And now you see there's this overlap between animations. Now that's useful if you want smoothing between two different animation clips. For example, if your player goes from idle to jumping, rather than snapping, you want it to be smooth. But for this, we just want two like completely separate animations without any overlap. So I'm gonna change this to be one, 
and this to be zero. So now there's no overlap, it just goes from one straight to the other. And I'll turn off has exit time. And I'll do the same over here. So press one, zero, whoops, one, zero, turn that off, close. And you can actually go do it over here as well if you want, though I don't think it makes any difference since there's no animation for empty. But now we're done with this. If we actually go back over to the scene, go to our button, so make sure it's selected, we want to add an animator component, okay? And this is the component on the game object that tells it, you know, which animator to use. And we're going to say, use this one. So drag in hours, okay? And now, if we go to this animation tab, if you don't see it, go to window animation, this one, control six. This is how we actually do our animation. So here's the turn button. Now what we can do is, because it's got the animator on with this controller, we can press the record button, okay? Now any changes we make will actually be added. So I'm going to click add property and what do we want to animate? Well, we want to animate its rotation. So I'll just add rotation. Okay. Now it's got a keyframe for its rotation saying at zero seconds, we're going to be at a zero, zero, zero. And at one, sec uh, one second, we're going to be at zero, zero, zero as well. We want to actually go from zero to 180. Okay. So if I go to the end and just say uh, 180, now what happens is, it said that to be zero at the start, 180 at the end, and it rotates. So if I press spacebar, it actually rotates to combat, and this is the change to combat animation clip. So I could say, okay, that's done for now. And then I want to go to the other animation and turn. I want to do the same thing. I'm going to add the rotation. At the start, the X is at 180, and then at the end, it's zero. Okay, so now if I run this animation, combat to end turn, okay? Now that we've set that up, we can actually press play and technically test it right now. We can go to the animator window. I'm going to drag this out over here, okay? Now we can manually turn the trigger on and off. Obviously we want to do it in code, but for now we can test it. So if I press trigger, notice how it goes to this state and then it's done, okay? And then if I zoom out, okay. Uh, actually when you are using the animator in play mode, it just snaps to whichever clip is currently playing. And apparently I messed it up by uh, moving it around. But if I press flip, it's like combat. I press flip again, it goes over to this one. So every time I flip, it now goes forwards and backwards, okay? And that's actually what we want. We just want to control it by code now, okay? Okay, so for the scripting part, we need a reference to an animator. Obviously we made that animator, but we need to interact with it in our code. So we need a reference to this animator. Okay, there it is. Now, uh, we don't need to store if it's our turn anymore because of how the state machine works. We've got the different states and the uh, transitions go between them. All we need to do is say flip and it will figure out basically which one to go to. We don't need to store that. Where for it's flipping, technically we could just ask the animator whether it's currently transitioning between states. And if so, then it's flipping. Problem is if you have an animator and it has more states than just flipping, then it means just because it's transitioning doesn't mean it's flipping, it could be doing something else. So it's actually more complex than that. I'm just gonna keep it simple and just have a bool for whether we're flipping or not. If we actually scroll down here now, all we need to do is delete all this Dotween code. If we're flipping, we obviously want to return them. And we're gonna say, if we're not flipping, animator.setTrigger, okay? Now we can pass in a name or an ID. And yeah, we could just type this in. So what did we call it? We called it flip button. All right, I could type flip button. The problem is then if this code is longer or in most of the places where you have animators, yeah, the code will be longer and you might forget what the string is or you might type it wrong. You know, you might use it in five places and type it wrong in one of them. So it's better to make a variable out of this. So we're gonna make it, uh, we're gonna use the ID because I think apparently the ID is faster. Usually uh, checking integers is faster than checking strings. So in a minute, once we finish the next two lines, then we're actually going to make this an integer. So we're gonna say uh, is flipping equals true. So once we start, we set it to true, but then we need to set it to false at some point. So I'm going to make a method called uh, finish flipping, okay? Which just sets is flipping to false. And what we can do is we can actually call this method from the animator, which I'll show you in a minute when we go back. And it's basically a drop down box for all the public methods on here. And we can just call this from the animator when it finishes the animation, which will then set is flipping to false for us. So to make this be an ID, I'm just gonna make a variable for it and I'll call it a hash flip button because it's gonna be what's known as a hash, though I'm not going to fully go into how that, uh, what that means right now. But effectively on the animator class, there is a method to convert a string to a hash. So we pass in flip button and it converts it to an integer, okay? So we've got this integer and now we can use that down here and what it'll do is when we actually use it, it will um, compare it with this because this flip button will actually be stored as an integer, okay? This name is just for us to see. So 
the strings converted to an integer in here. And then when we do this line, it's actually converting the string to the integer. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure if we don't do this um, and we pass in a string to set trigger, it actually just does this anyway, which would mean that every single time we flip, it would say convert the string to an integer, convert the string to an integer. We're just going to do it once and cache it here. Now that we're done with the code, we'll head back over to Unity, go to our animations. And if we drag the timeline or the, uh, the, the needle right to the end, okay, right when the flipping is done and we press this little uh, button here to add an event, okay, it actually lets us select all the methods on the script, uh, on the game object that this animate is on. The problem being this actual uh, button doesn't have our script on just yet. So if we add the turn button anim script and drag in the animator, now if we head back over and click on the little event, we now get all the uh, public methods we can call on this mono behavior, one of them being finish flipping. So when it's finished, we want to call finish flipping. Now this is on the change to end turn. We want to go back to change to combat and do the same thing. We're going to add an event and set it to be finish flipping. Then finally for step three, we'll give it a test. So if we go back over to Unity and press play, okay, here we are. I can press spacebar. We go to combat, press spacebar, and we go back to end turn. Okay, so the spacebar is working. And if I now click on the button, it also works using the animator. And if we just drag the animator to the side now, okay, we see over here, if I press spacebar, goes to end turn, goes back to change combat, and again, and again, and again, okay. And finally, just to show that the animator is reusable, if we just duplicate this button and I move this one uh, a bit forwards or actually a bit backward, now these both share the exact same code. They should both animate like this, okay? But if we click on each separate one, it actually is kind of cool in the way it works because each one has the script to flip itself, okay? So these animators are actually independent, but then spacebar, they both are listening for spacebar, okay? So I think that's kind of cool. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you did leave a like and subscribe, it'd mean a lot, it'd be great help. Let me know down below what you want to see next. But apart from that, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Saluk, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Exit Return Zero, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yuris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Buddha Ray, and Memory Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those, checking any of those out, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.